Coming up, we are going to have a look on how you can centrally manage and delegate access and security policies for your hybrid and multi-cloud resources. I'm here with Ryan Willis from the Azure management team, and we are going to talk about how you can leverage the Azure control plane and how you can take advantage of identities in your environment. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, so I think uh, when we look at on-premises assets and the cloud and multi-cloud world, you know, there's so many different things that you need to manage and it can often be very hard to keep track of where they all are and have a central place to actually make changes and report on the current state of all those machines and Kubernetes clusters. And that's where Azure Arc really comes in. We are pulling all of your resources, no matter where they're running, into the Azure Resource Manager where all of the Azure resources can be presented alongside your hybrid resources for that consistent and unified management experience. One of the things which we, we see a lot when people are moving to these hybrid and multi-cloud architectures for their application and their environment is when it comes to identity. When I talk to cloud architects, they often say, okay, hey, this is one of our challenging part. I wanna have some sort of role-based access and control, control over my environment. Definitely, yeah. And you know, we designed Azure Arc just like any other Azure resource so that when you onboard and project a representation of these on-premises resources into Azure, you retain full control over what the Azure users can do on those hybrid and multi-cloud machines. So just like any other Azure resource, you'll be able to use role-based access control and your organization strategy with management groups, subscriptions, and resource groups to make sure that the right people can see and even make changes to these resources running outside of Azure but anyone else does not get to know that they are connected to your Azure subscription. What you're saying is really, I can use the exact same role-based access control. And for example, if I have a team of like, let's say SharePoint admins or developers, which are just necessarily need to manage their SharePoint servers or the resources which belong to the SharePoint environment, you can actually like group them and just provide them access for that. And they don't have access to anything else. Exactly, yeah. And you know, in some cases you might find that all the management or monitoring that those admins need to do could be done through Azure. So you can actually sometimes even take away their access on the actual server so that the only way they can see this machine is through Azure, which can be fully audited using the activity log and all the other uh, mechanisms we have in place to make sure that they only see and manage their own resources. I never thought of taking away the access on the actual resource and then providing access just on the Azure layer. So that is, that is really powerful. Now, one thing I talk also with when I talk to like IT departments, especially to the IT pros is certificate management, right? And in on-premises environments, we often basically like used, for example, Active Directory in combination with group policies to then deploy all these certificates to the servers uh, running in our environment. Now with hybrid cloud, obviously, and multi-cloud environments, sometimes these servers are not even domain joined. So I know that there is something from Azure Arc which can help us with that, right? Yeah, definitely. And so let me set the stage a little bit and talk about kind of how Arc manages identity behind the scenes. So with Arc, you have an Azure representation of a resource that's running somewhere outside of Azure. Each Arc resource gets a managed identity associated with it. And so that's an Azure Active Directory uh, principle, which the password is regularly rotated for you by the Azure services on the back end. So our agent, when you run it on an Arc server, for example, uses that identity when it needs to go and talk back to Azure to authenticate with our service and provide uh, updates as to what's happening on that machine. We also let other apps on the machine use the same identity to talk to other Azure resources. So if you're building a hybrid app where you need to go and access something like a certificate that could be stored in Key Vault, you can use the managed identity of the Arc server, which again, is a native Azure Active Directory identity, completely disjoint from uh, any other identity systems you have in that particular server environment. And you can use that to grant access to other Azure resources, just like you would if you had an Azure VM trying to access a Key Vault or a storage account. So what you're saying basically is that I could, for example, like in, in Active Directory on-prem, we would probably have computer and user objects and with Azure Active Directory and now the possibility to use Azure Arc to get that managed identity, 
we basically have these objects and we can use the Azure control plane to assign permissions using these objects. Yes, absolutely. And so you mentioned earlier, certificates is a really great example of a situation where we often saw a lot of enterprises using Active Directory to push out certificates onto each of their servers. But how do you really handle that efficiently in a scenario where you've got tons of servers running potentially across multiple locations? Let's actually head into a demo. I think that'll really show how we can pull this managed identity together with Azure Key Vault and certificate management all in one and show how Arc, just by connecting that server into Azure, really simplifies the whole certificate management experience. All right, so we are here in the Azure portal and we're looking at my resource group where I've got a web server and a key vault. And so I have a certificate in my key vault that I want to deploy to that web server. So let's see how easy it is to do that with Azure Arc. So we'll first head over to the key vault and take a look at the certificates that I have uploaded there. You'll see I've got a, a certificate for dev test environments and a certificate for production environments. Now this web server is a production server, so I need to go to the access policy section and go and grant that Arc enabled server permission to read that certificate and download it to that server. So if I go here and select the uh, get and list permissions for secrets, which includes the private key of the certificate, and then search for the name of that Arc enabled server, you'll find a managed identity with the same name that you can grant access to this certificate in the key vault. And so if you end up searching and you find more than one result, you can also use the resource graph or our PowerShell module to go and find uh, the exact application ID associated with that Arc server. So once we go ahead and save uh, the configuration, we know now that the managed identity for that server will be able to download certificates from this key vault. So the next step is we need to go and actually tell Arc using an Azure Key Vault extension to go and synchronize the certificate down to that server. And so this extension has pretty simple. Its job is to go and regularly check for updates to that certificate in Key Vault and download them and install them when there are any changes. So you'll see here in the configuration, I just told it, here is the URI for that Key Vault certificate. Here is how frequently I want to check for updates every hour in this case. And then I went ahead and asked to go and deploy this extension to my Arc server. When we look back in the Azure portal, we will see the Arc server here. It has the Key Vault certificate extension uh, in the creating state. And within about five minutes, that uh, extension will be on that server and it will have started to synchronize down all the certificates that you've told it to pull from Key Vault. Now at this point, it's using that managed identity to grant a check if it has access to those certificates. So if you got this far and you forgot to go assign permissions, it's easy. You just go and do the part we did first, make sure that managed identity has access, and then you'll be able to go and it'll automatically check again at the interval you specified. So now if we go and look at that server, um, now we're looking at the certificate store for this front end web server in Windows Admin Center, you'll see that I only have uh, a certificate for an existing certificate that's not the web server certificate. If I go ahead and give this five minute wait, we'll fast forward here and uh, show you the final result. There we are. Now we see that the www.tailwindtraders.com certificate has been synchronized to the server in a secure fashion using the Key Vault extension, Azure Arc, and Azure Active Directory managed identities. Okay, that is that is pretty cool. And I think that really shows the power because it brings so many different things together. First of all, you have obviously the Azure control plane, you take advantage of the assigned managed identity to the Arc enabled server, you access the key vault, which like gives you that secure storage for your secrets and certificates. And then you deploy actually a management um, extension to the Arc enabled resource to actually go out and pull that certificate. So that that is that is pretty cool. Now, since this managed identity allows me to basically authenticate against basically the Azure resources, if I would be a developer, can I also access um, other resources where I use Azure Active Directory to authenticate? Yeah, that's a great question. So any application on that server that's been Arc enabled could leverage that identity to reach out to other Azure resources. 
Um, we have fully documented this on our uh, documentation, but let me actually show you another quick demo here of how that works. So I've head over into Visual Studio Code here. From our documentation, I took out the code that a developer could use to go and get an access token. So an important concept of managed identity is you don't actually need that regularly rotating uh, certificate that backs the identity as an application. You can just request from an API that is exposed by Azure Arc on that machine a token to go access a specific Azure resource. So in this case, I'm accessing Azure Resource Manager, and the process is pretty simple. First, you make a request to the API and say, hey, I would like to get a token using our managed identity to talk to Azure Resource Manager. Now on Azure Arc, there's an extra check here. We make sure that you are running as an elevated application, or if you're part of the connected machine uh, extension application security group on that machine, before you can actually get that token. So an ordinary user is not gonna be able to go and grab this identity. And how that's implemented is in the response, you'll get a challenge and it's gonna give you a path to a file that we've randomly generated with some random content. And you have to prove that you can open that file and send that request back to us with the contents and then you'll be able to actually get a token. So if I just copy and paste this over into an elevated PowerShell window here, you'll see the first part created uh, a file at the path shown on the screen. And uh, since I'm an administrator, I have access to read that file. So if I go and copy the second half of the script, which goes and takes the content of that file, sends it back to the authentication API, now I got an access token that my application could use to go reach out to other Azure resources. Now this of course is kind of a rudimentary example to show you the flow. Uh, this is also deeply integrated with like the azure.identity.net SDK. So you don't have to worry about this. You can just uh, use the SDK uh, and have it leverage the managed identity all on its own uh, without having to code any of this yourself. This really empowers basically developers to build these hybrid and multi-cloud architectures wherever their application is running, if they're combined running in Azure, on-premises, at the edge, or even in other cloud environments. So this, this is completely awesome. Now, obviously, what, what often comes up in this discussion then is, how does that work with security and compliance? And you already managed, you, we talked a little bit about like how you actually can see these things in the audit logs and stuff like that. Is that something, um, can I expect to like get all that power we have from like Azure resources also expand, extended to Azure Arc enabled resources? Absolutely. Everything that happens with an Azure Arc server through the control plane or with its managed identity will be auditable just like any other Azure resource. So if you go to the activity log, you can go and check when changes were made to the server, perhaps uh, someone went and deployed that extension for Key Vault, that'll be listed with the time of the event, so you can go trace that down. And of course, the benefit of Azure Active Directory is you have the backing of everything in Azure relying on AAD and that common uh, identity platform that you can use to track where managed identities have been used over time. And of course, it's a managed identity, so we're taking care of the password rotation for you. You don't have to worry about uh, baking any passwords into the code. Uh, your developers just have to ask to use the token from our API and from there we take care of all the rest for you. So it's honestly an easy way to improve the security of applications that are talking to other Azure resources that's also simplifying it in many ways. This is again, this is great and it'll make so many uh, compliance and security engineers so happy. Um, so obviously this was very interesting and I'm, not, I'm sure there's a lot more to learn. So Ryan, where should people go if they wanna learn more about Azure Arc? Yeah, we got a lot of great resources out there. If you're just getting started, take a look at the Azure Arc Jumpstart, which has a lot of ready to use scenarios for a ton of common environments uh, to get you onboarded to Azure Arc. And then when you're interested in the role-based access control and identity aspects, definitely check out our documentation, which has a full uh, listing of all the information you need to know about the managed identity, as well as the tech community blog for Azure Arc, where we've documented how to use that Azure Key Vault extension that's currently in public preview. Thank you very much, Ryan, for that overview. And again, for you who are watching, if you want to learn more about hybrid and multi-cloud architectures, check out our cloud adoption framework, as well as the Azure Architecture Center.